I think many of you will recognize this as uh, John Elway, obviously one of the great quarterbacks of the NFL. Someone who I think we can all agree has had tremendous achievement and success. What I really want you to do in this photograph is look at his eyes. And if you look at those eyes, you can see the intensity and in what I would say is also focus. And I think that as we think about what drives success and really ultimate achievement, there's many ingredients, naturally, and talent is certainly one of them. But I think focus is also a really, really important ingredient. And as I started to think about that, um, I recently had the honor of taking my company uh, public. And <clears throat> I started thinking about the statistics around that. And 32 quarterbacks have won the Super Bowl, 44 presidents of the United States of America, 77 actors have won a Best Picture Oscar. 5,768 people have won a gold medal in the Olympics. And some people would say taking your company public and, and uh, opening the bell at the New York Stock Exchange is similar to one of those sort of feats. But nevertheless, I started thinking, well, how many people have actually done that? And it turns out less than 1,000 people have actually been able to take their company public and ring the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange. So that's, that's, there's six times more people that have won an Olympic gold medal. So I started thinking about, well, what contributed to that? And it really, you know, I came back to focus as really being an important element of that. And as I started this slide, as it first came on, you notice it was sort of out of focus. And when that happened, probably what started to go through your mind, it probably subconsciously, because it was a little quick, was frustration. Because we're frustrated when things aren't clear. And so the definition, as I looked up here, seemed to me to be a little inadequate. Because if I think back on the eyes in John Elway's photograph, this doesn't really capture true focus, does it? So there's some other more definitions that really don't capture it. So if you forgive me, I kind of made it my own. I think it's dedicated attention with clarity. I think that's what focus is about. And so as we think about that, a lot of people come to me and they say, well, we have to focus on one thing. And that's just hogwash. You know, if a company only focused on its product, what would happen to sales and marketing and your finances? What if you just focused on finances and your product was terrible? Right? You can't. That's not true. That is, that is a fallacy to think that focus is just one thing. You have to be able to take all of the elements to achieve a goal, but put clarity around them. So, you know, as, as I try to relate that to an IPO process, there is so many different work streams that are occurring. And this is usually over a six to nine month period. A lot of uh, people focus on the road show, which is the culmination of the, end, the ending event, if you're successful, uh, of an IPO process. But there's a lot more that goes into it than that. And so if you think about it, uh, I started to put together all of those sort of things. Because as you think about it, well, what does that mean? There's hundreds of different work streams associated with that. So clearly not just one thing. There's hundreds and hundreds of pages of PowerPoint. And you're presenting to some of the top investment banks in the world uh, and, and investors throughout the world. We put together a, a very detailed and complicated, what we call a pre-clearance document to the Securities and Exchange Commission. What was interesting about this one was uh, the particular item that we were trying to gain pre-clearance on. We actually went to the person who wrote the rules with the SEC on this particular item, and he even said he didn't know the answer. That was too darn complex. So, you know, we had to put together the analysis around that. There's a 200-page registration statement, but behind that are thousands of pages of analysis, Excel worksheets uh, and Word documents, legal documents, and the diligence. And for us, our lead investment banks were Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. And with that, we had to go through the committees of those firms, committees of underwriting counsel, and of course, clearance from the SEC. So that is a tremendous amount of effort. And not only that, but then you go on the road. And just to give you some insight on that, uh, on that road show, so we had 60 meetings in nine days across 15 cities. Uh, probably saw a couple hundred different sets of investors. Um, a very grueling process. So anyway, that is kind of around dedication. And you really need focus around that. Sounds like, well, there's a whole lot of things, and that's my point. It's not just one thing when you think about focus. But it does mean sacrifice. Uh, Distraction is the opposite of focus. So you really do have to make sacrifices. You know, during that six month period, I would much rather have been shooting basketball hoops with my son. But you know, it was every Saturday and Sunday, it was every week. Um, really to give you kind of a sense, 
Uh, I spent uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas working. Um, the funny one was my birthday was on January 15th. I started that day at 4.30 in the morning, and I ended at 5 p.m. on January 16th. So it just kind of gives you an idea that really it does require that, that sacrifice. And I think as you, you know, again, I go back to that picture of John Elway, clearly he is so focused, and he just spent so much of his life dedicated to trying to get to that moment. So what does this bring you? <clears throat> I don't know if you know Bob Pisani from CNBC, but he had some, some nice words to say. This is, I think, about 24 hours after our first day of trading. Now, look, there's been a, a lot of interesting talk about IPOs this week. And if you look at some of the ones that were happening recently, a lot of interesting ones. So Rubicon yesterday priced at the low end of the range, 15 to 17, prices at 15, opens up 20%, ends the day up 33%. What does it mean? It means they're getting more conservative in how they price. And that's a very, very good sign. Price low and opening higher. And that's exactly what you can see on, on the day yesterday for Rubicon. That was a perfect IPO. We'll see if they can continue that kind of sensible pricing. All up for grabs. Well, while, while I appreciate Mr. Pisani's sentiments. That might be a little overstated. Um, but anyway, it, it was nice to see something like that. So I'll, I'll close by giving you a sense of <clears throat> what, it, what it feels like. Thank you.